Hello, and thank you for listening in to learn more about the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's proposed regulation changes for redfish. This presentation provides background about the new management approach for redfish and provides an overview of our evaluation of the redfish fishery within the proposed Indian River Lagoon region. As you may have heard, FWC is proposing several redfish regulation changes, and we would like to hear your feedback. This virtual presentation will provide an overview of the new redfish management process and the information used to develop the proposed rules. We'll also let you know how you can provide comments on the proposed changes. Redfish is one of Florida's most iconic and popular recreational fisheries. However, over the past few years, FWC has heard a variety of concerns about this fishery. To address these concerns, we're implementing a new management approach that incorporates a holistic review of ecological and human factors to evaluate the fishery on a finer regional scale. To implement this new management approach, FWC is proposing to create nine management regions. This will allow greater flexibility for addressing smaller scale issues, concerns, and preferences. FWC used six management metrics to evaluate the redfish fishery in each of these proposed management regions. The results of these evaluations, as well as stakeholder feedback, were used to inform the proposed regulation changes we'll discuss in this presentation. Throughout the development of the new redfish management approach and the proposed regulations, FWC staff has used a variety of approaches to gather stakeholder feedback. Stakeholder input is a critical component of fisheries management. Public engagement included an angler satisfaction survey, the first ever redfish summit, public workshops, and public comment opportunities at commission meetings. The public workshops on the proposed rule changes are a continuation of our public engagement efforts to ensure that those interested in the management of redfish have the opportunity for their opinion to be heard. As stated earlier, FWC is implementing a new holistic management approach to incorporate regional differences in environmental and human factors into the management of redfish. This requires the establishment of the nine proposed regions shown on the map. These proposed management regions were designed based on differences in habitat characteristics, identifiable geographic boundaries, stock assessment regions, and stakeholder and FWC law enforcement feedback. Establishing smaller regions would allow greater flexibility to address local issues. Using feedback from previous stakeholder engagement, FWC selected six management metrics to evaluate the redfish fishery in each region. These metrics include escapement, harmful algal blooms, stakeholder feedback, fishing effort, habitat trends, and relative abundance. Before getting into the management metrics, I would first like to describe the boundaries of the proposed Indian River Lagoon region using the map on the slide. The northern boundary is located at Lytle Avenue South Causeway in New Smyrna Beach, and the region extends south to Martin Palm Beach County line. This region does not include the Loxahatchee River or its tributaries. We evaluated the redfish fishery in the proposed Indian River Lagoon region using the new management metrics. A summary of this evaluation is captured in our new annual reviews. Data used for each metric are collected from a variety of partners. Each region will be evaluated annually with the most recent available data. To access this annual review and the annual reviews for the other regions, visit myfwc.com slash fishing slash saltwater slash recreational slash red dash drum slash. Over the next few slides, we will take a deeper dive into the evaluation and highlight some of the metric evaluation results FWC considered when developing the proposed regulations. The first metric is escapement, which was originally the only metric previously used to evaluate the redfish fishery. Escapement evaluates the impacts of fishing by estimating the percentage of fish surviving through the slot limit compared to an unfished population. The current escapement target is 40%, which provides a buffer over the 20% sustainability limit that enables the stock to be resilient to unexpected events. Escapement is estimated by the stock assessment, which is updated every four to six years. The stock assessment calculates escapement for all of Southeast Florida, which includes the proposed Southeast and Indian River Lagoon regions. 
and part of the proposed Northeast region in Volusia County. However, the majority of the catch data used to calculate the escapement metric comes from the Indian River Lagoon region. The long-term escapement trend for that larger region has declined since the early 1990s and recently went below the management target. The next metric is harmful algal bloom frequency and duration, specifically for red tide. Red tide releases neurotoxins that can kill marine life, including redfish. Red tide data are routinely collected statewide by FWC and roughly 60 partners. Red tide does not commonly occur in the Indian River Lagoon. Bloom concentrations that could impact fish species only occurred in four out of the last 20 years. Although red tide does not commonly occur here, other types of harmful algal blooms have impacted this region. These different harmful algal blooms can also negatively impact water quality and habitat. An important component of fisheries management is stakeholder feedback, which is the next metric used to assess redfish. One of the ways we collected public feedback was through an angler satisfaction survey of recreational license holders and charter captains. We are going to repeat the survey every two to three years. Results from the 2021 survey indicated that respondents from the Indian River Lagoon region had the lowest satisfaction with their recent fishing experience compared to the rest of the state. Responses from private recreational anglers were almost evenly split between positive and negative ratings, but for higher guide responses were more negative with over half rating their recent experience as poor or very poor. The response to this question from the Indian River Lagoon region is shown in the pie charts on the slide. When asked to select issues that redfish face in the region, water quality and habitat loss were the top two responses. Once the proposed regulations were announced, the majority of the feedback that staff received has been in support of catch and release only in the Indian River Lagoon. There were also suggestions to enact temporary catch and release regulations in the region prior to the final rule hearing. However, since the rulemaking process is already well underway, we would like to first hear from stakeholders in the region before any regulation changes are made. Fishing effort and landings are important characterizations of a fishery, and for this reason it's the next metric. Fishing effort and landings information is collected by NOAA's Fisheries Marine Recreational Information Program. This program uses information gathered from anglers to estimate the landings, releases, and effort for recreationally targeted marine fish species. The Indian River Lagoon region has experienced an increase in effort since the early 1990s and a more recent decrease that is likely linked to the environmental issues in the Indian River Lagoon. Similarly, the total catch has also declined since 2016. Habitat is critical to all fish species and therefore is another metric being used to evaluate the redfish fishery. Specifically, we examine the extent of seagrass, salt marsh, and mangroves because these habitats are essential for redfish foraging and refuge. We acquired habitat data from over 50 different collaborators throughout Florida and evaluated the change in acreage of each habitat over time for each region. The Indian River Lagoon region has some concerning habitat metric trends. There has been a long-term decline in seagrass throughout the region as shown in the map, and there are a few continuous seagrass beds left. Even though the southern part of the region has shown a recent increase in seagrass coverage, it is still significantly less compared to previous years. Poor water quality and reoccurring algal blooms are some of the stressors that likely cause the estimated 60% decrease in total seagrass coverage. Saltwater marsh and mangrove swamp do occur in this region. However, not enough long-term data have been collected to assess the change in extent over time. The last metric, relative abundance, can inform how a fish population responds to different ecological stressors such as extreme weather events and changing environmental conditions. FWC's Fishery Independent Monitoring Program, often referred to as FIM, conducts sampling in several estuaries around the state. The data from the sampling are used to develop relative abundance trends for redfish that are less than a year old. These fish are also called young of year and legal sized redfish. FIM sampling is conducted in the Indian River Lagoon. The top graph represents young of year sampled using river set nets. The middle graph represents the young of year sampled using bay set nets. 
These graphs show how young of year abundance has decreased over time in both the bay and river set nets. The bottom graph shows relative abundance of legal sized redfish, which declined to some of the lowest levels reported in the time series. All the information I just went over was used to inform the proposed regulation changes, but before I get to the proposal, I want to make sure you are aware of the current regulations. There are currently three management regions shown in the map on the slide. In the northwest and south management regions, anglers are limited to a one fish bag limit for redfish. In the northeast management region, the bag limit is two fish. Statewide, the only gear that are allowed to be used to harvest redfish are hook and line and cast nets. The slot size limit includes an 18 inch minimum and 27 inch maximum. In addition to the bag limit, there are vessel and transport limits. Regardless of the number of people on a vessel, no more than eight redfish may be on board. When in transit on land, no person may transport more than six fish. Captain and crew are allowed to maintain a personal bag limit when on a for hire trip. Commercial harvest from Florida state waters and all harvests from federal waters are prohibited. There are also temporary regulations in effect for a portion of Southwest Florida put in place following a severe multi-year red tide that make redfish catch and release only through August 31st, 2022. Using the new management approach, we are proposing some regulation changes that will impact the highlighted regulation. Before concluding, I'd like to provide you some information on our public engagement efforts in June 2022 and what's up next. FWC held 12 in-person workshops throughout Florida in June 2022. The locations of the workshops are indicated by the stars in the map. This recording is one of nine presentations that was created for each management region, which can be found on our website, myfwc.com slash fishing slash saltwater slash rulemaking slash workshops. Staff will continue to meet with interested stakeholders to get feedback on the new management approach and the proposed regulations. If you're interested in coordinating small group meeting, contact staff by email at marine at myfwc.com. As mentioned, we are also gathering public comment online through our Saltwater Commons page. Please visit myfwc.com slash saltwatercommons to submit a comment. After gathering feedback, staff will present the final rule recommendations and public comment to the Commission. This is currently scheduled for the July 2022 Commission meeting. That concludes this presentation, and thank you everyone for taking the time to listen in. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact staff at marine at myfwc.com.